I think I think David, you first came to my attention because of your uh, wonderful investors' corner articles yeah. that you were oh, writing. Thank you. Um, and uh, you know, and and you you continue to write some of those, and uh, you're the editor, uh, making sure that those investors' corner. Uh, education materials get out there uh, for for all the world to see, and uh, certainly you had a lot of time in which uh, Bill O'Neill was very very involved with the market and uh, talking with the markets team regularly, um, yes. and and giving that guidance and and instruction on how to uh, phrase things and uh, how to analyze what was happening in the market. So, uh, any anything that you want to share in particular uh, about kind of that experience? Thanks, Justin. Yes, and and thank you for mentioning the, the Investors Corner, which which now uh, is a, a team operation in terms of editing. Got to really tip my hat to Juan out in Sibia, uh, who's been with IBD uh, as long as uh, as as us virtually, and uh, it, because of my duties with IBD Live leaderboard, uh, I, I'm doing less editing, but still uh, always love to get involved. And the Investors Corner is very special in my heart, actually, because. Uh, there was one day, the first year I, I, I joined IBD in 1999, Chris Gessel uh, asked me to come over to Bill's office, which is just around the corner of the newsroom. Mm -hmm. And Bill said that, you know, we would really like you to manage that column uh, as a front page column. The mm -hmm. only story on the front page of Investors Business Daily when it was a daily newspaper, Monday to Friday, wow. uh, as the only educational piece on a uh, on a page where it was mostly news mm -hmm. so it, it, that struck me because he clearly you know was following through on a mission to help as many readers as possible just become smarter in the stock market and make more money uh with a great system mm -hmm. yeah uh, uh, education always so important mm -hmm. yeah i mean absolutely, I, absolutely. I i mean i started out as a subscriber around that time david and that was the one column I read every day. I would cut out the 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 columns and and kind of read them over and over again. Mm -hmm. And because uh, there there wasn't back then that there wasn't a lot of other ways to learn it. Uh, and and so yeah, those were just incredibly valuable. Mm -hmm. Such a great point, Arusha, in terms of learning, right? Because we yeah. had Bill's book, How to Make Money in Stocks, that first yep. edition, uh, I which believe was nineteen eighty five. Which was not yeah. easy to read, right? I, I no. mean, when you're new, <laughs> when you're new to the like, I was completely new to the stocks. So to get get a book like that, I mean, it, it was just too much. It was too complicated for me at that time. But getting these kind of bite size, uh, everyday real life examples, um, that that's kind of just how it, things just slowly built for me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then yeah. I went go back to the book, and it's like, okay, now that makes a little bit more sense. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people did that. And right now, I think the spirit of the Investor's Corner really flows f freely through the podcast, uh, IBD Live, so many videos that we produce, the stock market today, uh, and, and other uh, products, premium products that IBD has grown over the past two decades. So uh, even though Investor's Corner is now only uh, produce a, a brand new corner produced only once a week in general, uh, a lot of the content was that was produced in the past continues to be republished and still uh, gain a lot of following and, and really uh, uh, in, in increase a lot of people's knowledge. So uh, I feel uh, as, as a you know, uh, member of that project, uh, I feel a lot of pride in that. Uh, I also want to, uh, you know, since we're going to talk a lot about Bill O'Neill, I wanted to uh, share a few uh, lessons that uh, I, I, I learned personally. Uh, but before that, you know, I, I I think the for for someone who's brand new to IBD or has not met Bill O'Neill and wondered, you know, how how did IBD become successful? How did Bill O'Neill become so so successful? I think you can in in one way distill it into three just three key elements. One was you had Bill O'Neill, the scientist, the guy who's curious about how yeah. the market worked, created an incredible database that led to a, a simple to use rating system, EPS rating, relative strength rating. And now and after the composite rating uh, and then looking at the charts of the greatest winners and trying to find patterns, that was a scientist uh, part of Bill. Then you had the artist uh, uh, in Bill in which, you know, he he looked at these charts so often and he identified these patterns and named some of these uh, th these patterns. Or at least if he didn't, if he wasn't the first to name it, uh, he certainly made it 
uh, common knowledge uh, within the U.S. investing audience. So cup with handle, flat base, and then after that, the short stroke, the three weeks right. tight, the ascending base. Uh, in that sense, I, I really see Bill as a creative, uh, a creative uh, mind. And then the third key would be uh, incredible humility. Uh, I, I think you guys would agree that never once did I ever hear Bill in the newsroom or anywhere uh, boast about himself, like how much money he made, uh, how successful his businesses were. He was always humble. And, and the system of IBD, the buying and selling, the trading, the investing, uh, has humility through and through. And I think the only time when, when Bill would boast was when th the paper had a milestone, when, when yeah. there was success for the paper because it was helping people. Mm -hmm. And usually I will say that when he, when he boasted, he wasn't saying I, he was saying we. Um, you know, he used he used we a lot. Uh, That's right. And, and instead of I, uh, for for the positives and you know what what was going on and, and you know whether it was interviews, whether it was discussions with um, with people, or whether it was speeches he was giving, uh, he he definitely focused on the on the we more than the I. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, and, you know, I, I gosh, uh, th th those bullets are, I, I, I've got to, I've got to hand it to you, Dave. I, I think that those are just some really uh, good, good things. And I feel like there's a lot that we could unpack there. Um, you know, certainly uh, I think the, the scientist part that you mentioned, that curiosity element, and I think the humility to go with it was important because he kind of approached it as, Hey, look, I'm not, you know, I don't think I'm the smartest guy in the room necessarily, but I'm curious to see how this actually works, not just the way people say that it works. Uh, mm -hmm. you right. know, and so I, I think he also had that maybe a uh, healthy journalistic skepticism of rather mm -hmm. than just accepting uh, what people were saying at face value. Well, let, let me kick the tires on this myself and see if this is actually uh, true, uh, some of these statements. Um, and uh, again, this is, I think, what led him to follow uh, people that were actually successful in the market as mm -hmm. opposed to those that were just writing about it and and saying, you know, what the market should do, <laughs> you know, right. and let, let, like let's follow Dreyfus those people. Fund, right? Yeah, yeah, the Dreyfus yeah. one. Let's follow the people, you know, Jack exactly. Dreyfus, who's actually doing it and being successful. Let's let's figure out what he's doing as opposed yeah. to what uh, people are saying the market should do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, 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 I'm glad you I'm glad there's three basic uh, key points uh, uh, resonated with with both you guys, and um, because I had the the true rare uh, privilege to meet with him in person and talk with him, being part of a lot of meetings, uh, I, I now I wanted to share uh, five little mini points, uh, mini lessons that I gained personally through my own interactions. Uh, one, and and, and I'll, I'll keep them very brief, but the first one is uh, I think one key to his success was always keeping all the mistakes small. In every investment, I, I know Justin's talked about this. And when when J Justin, you would examine his trades, you saw lots of tiny losses, and then the big pull, the big winner, the uh, the one that made up for all those losses and more. Uh, one story that really sticks uh, sticks in my mind is the fact that Bill visited the office of Gerald Loeb, another famous Wall Street investor right. who avoided the 1929 crash wrote some great bestsellers, and he asked Gerald Loeb about how he thinks about cutting losses. Do you think 8% is a, is, is a, is a worthy uh, loss-cutting rule? And, he's, and Gerald Loeb told Bill, well, I would like 8% uh, to be the maximum size loss, right. Right. Uh, not, not the minimum. And, and so that was, a, that was a great story he shared. And, and I think in times in webinars and in seminars, Bill would say, I, uh, I would like to keep my my losses in general, averaging just four to five percent. Uh, another uh, moment that was a really great one, uh, sort of a light bulb moment for me, was when I was in the, the conference room, in the newsroom with Bill and Chris Gessel, and we were just talking about uh, the during. It was during the 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 2012 to 2014 part of the market. We came out of the great financial crisis bear market, coming out strong, but then we had a lot of choppy action and. There were a lot of stocks that that looked great, promising, but they didn't work out, and and yet at that time, Bill was really closely examining all of our stories and whether our chart analysis was right and whether we were picking the right stocks to write about. And he said, you know, in general, uh, this year you guys have been doing good work because you 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 
we selected pretty much stocks uh, 60% of the time that were, were winners. And in any process, in any system, if you can be right 60% of the time, you can take that to the bank. And so yeah. that, that means that, right, if you keep your, if your mistakes small and yeah. your winners are really going to pay off. Sixty uh, percent is good. I mean, even if you're forty yeah. <laughs> percent, right? If you manage your risk, right, and and you're taking, you know, you're letting your winners run, that a lot of times that that's enough. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, three more uh, quick lessons is uh, one time, uh, Bill asked me to bring me a, a couple charts, print out the charts of of the stocks that really uh, were disappointing in my own investing, and I brought CSIQ, uh, that's Canadian Solar. Uh, yeah. Maybe we can take a look at a monthly yeah. chart later, but you know, I I, uh, I invested in that one heavily because Chris Gessel and others and I myself we 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 had some success in some of the the true winners of the solar energy space when it really took off. We're we're talking for solar FSLR. Uh, yeah. Its IPO was incredible. Uh, JA Solar was a stock that was a triple for me. So I thought, oh, CSIQ, looking for that another big gain. But when I when I showed him how I got nicked and uh, bruised. Uh, by that stock, he said, you know, Dave, look at the price. In general, it's been in the teens. You want to be looking for higher quality, higher quality, better long-term winners are going to probably start breaking out at a much higher price and just keep going higher. So that lesson about, you know, looking for the truest growth stocks uh, really resonated. Um, like uh, you know, uh, two more lessons uh, that I like to add is that um, you, you guys have heard this story, but, you know, Bill used to take tennis lessons and uh, one lesson he learned from the teacher is that after he made a really nice forehand uh, stroke and he admired it, he, 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 he made a mistake of not getting ready for the next shot. That's great. <laughs> yeah. That's so good. I love that, love that story because uh, I was a, a competitive, a, a, a fairly modic, uh, you know, uh, minimally competitive tennis player in high school. And it's so true. You got to just get ready for that next play. And I think that that. Uh, that makes sense in terms of getting ready for the next winning stock in the same sector that you might have had success. So when I when I think about how he said, well, we, we did really well in in uh, Price Club, but we didn't do as well as we would have liked to in Costco, which came right after that, you know, mm -hmm. which integrated. Uh, and he said that was an important lesson. And I think today, you know, when you look at uh, Excellus, ACLS, that was my Costco because I, I should have been paying attention to these new emerging winners like ACLS. Uh, after we've seen some big runs in some of those large cap semi uh, companies, whether it's NV NVIDIA uh, or ASML or whatnot. Um, and so the, the fifth uh, lesson is uh, related to this book I wrote um, about Investors Business Daily uh, and the making of millionaires. Uh, and this was to commemorate the 20th anniversary of IBD. T 2004 was an incredible, incredibly important year for IBD because it took 20 years since the 1984 founding for IBD to finally become profitable on its own as, as, a, as a business entity. We, we, we finally figured out the, uh, the formula, so to speak. We had enough sales, advertising was going well, and, and running the operation well enough that Bill asked me, hey, David, could you write a book to commemorate this milestone? And uh, it's, it's pretty crazy that I wrote this book in a month. With the help wow, of wow, no way. Yeah, wow. with the with, wow. with the help of of uh, then uh, editor in chief uh, Westman, he was mm -hmm. a great guy. He wrote one key chapter about the the uh, editorial section, the, the development of the editorial uh, 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 side of the newspaper. But um, the reason I'm bringing up this book is because as we had many many conversations with Bill, he had told me that he invested. As we all know, it took two stocks, uh, pick and save and Price Club, uh, the profits of those two stocks uh, to generate the money needed to, to start a newspaper, right? And we all know, okay, well, it, he invested um, quite a lot of money uh, over seven and a half year period in pick and save and about four years in uh, Price Club, which became Costco. But I don't think he ever told anyone that, you know, and at the time he said, David, don't, don't write this in a book, don't tell anybody. But I made 25 million, 25 million uh, in profits from those two stocks, and that 25 million helped me start the newspaper. Wow. And so mm -hmm. that that was, you know, that was a that was incredible uh, profit he made. And I think 
uh, the lesson from that is patience, patience and concentration in mm-hmm. uh, great companies that with, with a lot of growth. And, uh, and that lesson, I think, uh, helps every IBD investor uh, if they really want to, you know, find a, find a big winner. Yeah, so true. And I, I really like the title of the book, Making a Millionaires, because, um, you know, I, I worked as Bill's assistant from September of 1999 um, for what? gosh, 15, 16 years, uh, something like that. And uh, during that time, I mean, I can't tell you how many letters would come in, um, you know, with, with people saying, hey, you know, you, you, you changed my life. Um, you know, people would send, you know, I remember one particular gentleman sent a photo uh, from, from Arizona and um, the license plate said, uh, thanks IBD, T-H-X-I-B-D. Um, and it was on his Mercedes. And, oh. you know, he was like, I, I, I can't believe that I, I bought a Mercedes with my profits in the stock market. You know, people talk Fantastic. about, you know, what they, you know, were able to do for their families. They're, you know, sending their children to college, um, uh, charities. Uh, there was a, a pastor who talked about how much money he raised, um, with, uh, with, with just, you know, char- charitable causes, um, and, and doing good out there. And, and it was with stock market profits. So, uh, again, really, really love the title of the book. I think it was just very, uh, very good because I did see those letters come in. Um, but you, you had another, uh, you had another story that you wanted to share, Dave. Yeah. You know, your comment, uh, Justin, about the title, uh, it, it, it's great. I, 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 in, in retrospect, I really agreed with the title, uh, the, the making of millionaires, Colin, how IBD rewrote the rules of investing and business news. It's, it's quite a mouthful. But uh, this title uh, was uh, many, it was formed over many meetings and discussions among a big group. And it's, it, it kind of reflects the humor of, of Bill O'Neill, a dry humor, because uh, at the time when I was writing this book, I was thinking about like, what would be a catchy title? And uh, because California is, is you know, kind of a, a place of, entrepreneurship and venture capital and startups and all that. I was thinking about how up in Northern California, you have that famous Sand Hill Road where a lot of large Mm -hmm. venture capital firms were made. And I said, well, where's IBD based? We're not based in Northern California. We're not in Silicon Valley. Uh, The the, the term Silicon Beach was not invented yet. Right. But we're near Bayuna Creek. Why don't we call ourselves, why don't we call, why don't we call the book The Innovators at Bayuna Creek? And so that was my that was my idea, okay, to make it like I'm a curious, like uh, mysterious name, and I presented a bill, and then a week later, Bill came and said, he 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 knocked on my, uh, uh, you know, he was coming up to my cubicle, got my attention, said, Dave, why would you want to name me uh, af- after? after a, a, a uh, concrete canal. <laughs> and, and it's true that, you know, Bayona Creek uh, might sound like very pastoral and beautiful, but, you know, that, that part of the creek, which is the L.A. River, uh, is, is not, a, not a pretty sight. And, and, and I said, well, you know, Bill, not everyone knows what Bayona Creek really looks like, but, you know, maybe, maybe we could, we could we put the share Bayona Creek knowledge. on the map. Uh, as you can imagine, he, he got a committee of, of executives <laughs> And that title got shot down so fast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but well, the making of millionaires uh, uh, rose to the top. You, you, you mentioned that it was for the 20th anniversary of IBD uh, back in 2004. We're right. coming up on the 40th anniversary um, next year. Uh, actually, I think April uh, April is our anniversary month. Um, you That's know, right. This is when wow. the first uh, first paper uh, launched. Uh, you know. Uh, 39 years ago. So we're kind of commemorating that as well. Um, any, uh, any chance that you're going to do a, a, another edition, uh, but the, 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 the next 20 years, I would say if, if you agree to be a co-author and you too, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, we'll have to, we'll have to, you know, start, start our contract negotiations here uh, <laughs> pretty soon. Well, well and, uh, and, a, and, a, and a, a couple of things here. Well, first, David, I, I bought that book day one. So and so, I was very excited when you were coming out with it because that was another opportunity to to get knowledge from you and also Bill and, and the whole IBD team. Uh, awesome. And and uh, speaking of anniversaries, uh, this is going to be the 60th anniversary of William O'Neill and Company. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. So that that that's what started everything. You know that right, Bill Bill right. was doing the William O'Neill. William O'Neill and Company working with institutions at that at, at that point, and um, and that really got the whole 
whole, whole ball rolling. So and let's um, not forget incredible. that you know, as you mentioned with price, uh, you know, price club and and pick and save kind of starting up, uh, you know, the, the profits being used from those uh, to start up IBD. Uh, William O'Neill and Company, you know, that was started from Syntax uh, that had come up with the birth control go. pill uh, uh -huh. back back in the early 60s. Uh, you know, hey, these these Mexican yams have something to them that uh, uh, <laughs> are, right. are interesting. And um, yeah, it was a company, I think it was based out of Panama. And, uh, you know, and, and it was really kind of a combination of uh, Chrysler, Chrysler in mm -hmm. 62 after the, um, the Cuban Missile Crisis, you know, after that got resolved and uh, then Parlaying Cor that into uh, syntax. Well, also so. Corvette too, right? And Corvette, yeah, the short side. Shorting, yeah. shorting Corvette, Corvette. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, yeah, it's it's amazing. It's amazing what stock profits can do, right? Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you want to watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.